Obama has been in India to better ties and end strengthened relations. Let's hope our relations with China also gets better. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis is a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Obama's trade strategy runs into stiff resistance. G20 to tackle US-China currency concerns. Haiti cholera outbreak prompts fresh UN aid plea. Burma General sign Aung San Suu Kyi's release order. British gas to raise gas and electricity bills by 7%. Nigeria to question Iranian over arms seized in Lagos. And now the news in detail. Obama's trade strategy runs into stiff resistance. President Obama hopes of emerging from his Asia trip with the twin victories of a free trade agreement with South Korea and a unified approach spurring economic growth around the world ran into resistance on all fronts on Thursday putting Mr. Obama at odds with his key allies and the largest trading partner. The most concrete trophy expected to emerge from the trip eluded his grasp. A long-delayed free trade agreement with South Korea, first negotiated by Bush administration and then reopened by Mr. Obama to have greater protections for American workers. And as officials frantically tried to paper over differences among the group of 20 members with a vaguely worded communique to be issued Friday, there was no way to avoid discussion of the fundamental differences of economic strategy. After five largely harmonious meetings in the past two years to deal with most severe downturn since the Depression, major disputes broke out between Washington, China, Britain, Germany and Brazil. Each rejected core elements of Mr. Obama's strategy of stimulating growth before focusing on deficit reduction. Several major nations continued to accuse the Federal Reserve of deliberately devaluing the dollar last week in an effort to put the cause of America's competitive troubles on trading partners rather than taking politically tough measures to rein in spending at home. G20 to tackle U.S.-China currency concerns. Leaders of the G20 group of major economies have agreed to avoid competitive devaluation of currencies after talks concluded in the South Korean capital, Seoul. Leaders agreed to come up with indicative guidelines to tackle trade imbalances affecting world growth. Tensions had been high between some delegations over how to correct distortions in currency and trade. But the agreement fell short of U.S. push to limit trade deficits. Some fear the conflict chiefly between China and the U.S. may threaten global growth. Haiti cholera outbreak prompts fresh U.N. aid plea. The UN has appealed for nearly $164 million to fight a cholera outbreak in Haiti, which has now claimed 724 lives. UN spokeswoman Elizabeth Beers said that unless funds were provided, all our efforts can outturn by the epidemic. She said the disease had so far infected at least 11,125 people in five of Haiti's 10 districts. Aid agencies are battling to contain cholera in the capital port our prince amid fears it will spread through camps housing 1.1 million earthquake survivors. More than 80 people have been died in the past 24 hours across the country, according to the health ministry. Ms. Beers of the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, said the funds will be used to bring in more doctors, medicines and water purification equipments. Ms. Beers of the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, said the funds will be used to bring in more doctors, medicines and water purification equipments. Burma's general signed Aung San Suu Kyi's release order. 
Reports from Burma say military authorities have signed an order authorizing the release of pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi. But hopes she would be freed on Friday were dashed. There, was, there has been no official confirmation of a release order. <laughs> A leader of the NLD party told 2,000 supporters gathered at its headquarters to go home and return on Saturday. Ms. Su Kyi has been detained for 15 of the past 21 years and her house arrest term expires on Saturday. There has been increased police activity outside her house in Rangoon, Burma's largest city, but no formal statement from military officials. However, Ms. Su Kyi is not expected to accept conditional release if it excludes her from political activity. The 65-year-old was originally due to be released last year, but a case involving an American who swam across India Lake to her home claiming he was on a mission to save her prompted the latest 18-month detention. British gas raised gas and electricity bills by 7%. British gas customers will face 7% rise in gas and electricity bills this winter, the company has announced. The increase which comes into effect on 10th December was the result of rising wholesale prices, it said. The rise affects 8 million customers, but the company added that its 300,000 most vulnerable customers would initially be not charged. British Gas has become the second major UK energy supplier to announce price increase for the winter months. It said the wholesale gas prices had risen by 25% since the spring. We know that rising energy prices come at a difficult time for many, said British Gas Managing Director Phil Benley. The company said the prices for those on a typical dual fuel deal would go up by pounds 1.50 a week. Vulnerable customers on the essentials package with British Gas will have prices held up until 1st of April 2011. The announcement comes shortly after Scottish and Southern Energy SSE said it was to put up its domestic gas tariffs by 9.4% at the start of December. Prices are actually too high. Margins are growing too fast. Yes, I know the companies need to make profits. The air regulator needs to protect future investment too, but needs to protect consumers as well, and business consumers as well as vulnerable households. It has the powers to control those margins. It needs to use them. Nigeria to question Iranian over arms seized in Lagos. Iran has allowed Nigeria to interview an Iranian citizen inside the embassy in connection with a shipment of arms seized in Lagos. Iran was accused of being behind the arms and there were suggestions Nigeria was being used as a smuggling route. But security sources say Iran has pledged to cooperate with fully with the investigation. Nigeria has said it will report Iran to the UN if investigations showed UN sanctions had been broken. Iran is under sanctions because of its nuclear program. Iran's foreign minister Manjokram Mataki has traveled to Nigeria to discuss the issue with the Nigerian counterpart Odin Ajibogobia, who told the reporters both countries would prefer to clear the air over the incident. Now, before we close today's bulletin of news analysis, let's have a recap of the headlines. Obama's trade strategy runs into stiff resistance. G20 to tackle US-China currency concerns. Haiti cholera outbreak prompts fresh UN aid plea. Burma General sign Aung San Suu Kyi's release order. British gas to raise gas and electricity bills by 7%.
Nigeria to question Iranian over arms seized in Lagos. And there we end today's bulletin of news analysis. Be with us in the coming weeks too. Thank you.